OK, so next we're going to look at uh, Marcom planning. And so this is the final of the uh, series of topic one um, classes um, giving the, the overall overview of what um, <coughs> what the whole module is about. So this is the lead in essentially. So it's Marcom planning and including um, the, the creative brief or the master promotional brief, sometimes called. So um, at the end of today of this lecture, uh, you'll be able to prescribe a process. So you write out the process that can be used when planning Marcoms. So that's something that will be um, put in place for every uh, topic, uh, every brand that you have, and it's specific to the product you're selling and you should know in the context of your own products. Uh, examine each stage of the process in detail and discuss the importance of marketing comms in driving consumer behaviour. So IMC, as we looked at before, it's like an orchestra and the conductor is bringing everybody together and all singing off the same sheet. So the purpose is to make is to direct the various instruments in the orchestra to make music rather than noise and making sure they're all on the same tune. Otherwise, it's just nonsense. Uh, the IMC plan um, details which marcoms and media should be used at which time and to what extent. So before the brief can be written, the marketer must be clear about did we um, how did we get here? Where are we now? Uh, where do we want to be? Um, and how we how do we get there? And did we get there? So to start with, where are we now? Um, you need to do a situational analysis or develop a credible promotional campaign. The marketer must have answers to key questions. So market share. And again, these are things once you're in a company working on a specific brand or you're working for a particular, maybe a gym. You know, some of these questions may or may not be relevant and they're not questions that you need to really uh, spend a lot of time, you're going to know this stuff and it's just, you know, getting the latest information perhaps to update it. And um, so it's it's um, hopefully will become second nature uh, that it should be natural. You know the answers, roughly speaking, to these questions and can look them up. Um, so how do your sales compare with that of the competitors? So market share, it may you mightn't be able to, if, if it's a gym in the area, you might not be able to get statistics on it, but you might get a sense of it uh, from doing other research um, and, and looking at what the other gyms are doing and, and so on, how busy they are going in, checking out, what are they offering? So again, key competitors going in, doing your research, knowing what they do, keeping an eye, keeping an ear out for what people are saying about them. Who are they? What's their market share? What's their advertising expenditure? Again, you're not going to get definite details um, on that, but you can get a sense of it looking at what it is they're putting out there. So keeping an eye on their comms, their um, social media pages, whatever else they're doing. How great is their media presence? So in general, what are they doing and, and does it seem like they're um, spending a lot of money on it or spending a lot of time and time is money. Um, what's the position in the market, your position in the market versus theirs and so on? How is the product or brand differentiated from the competitors? Why are customers buying from you instead of down the road or that other thing that they could do? How do consumers view your product or brand? So is it generally well received, well respected in the uh, product class, um, you know, considered average, which could be very respectable. Um, brand awareness then, how high is spontaneous awareness of the brand? So without naming it, if you were to ask people who sponsors the RBS, could they name it if that's, or is there a, an equivalent question with your brand, so without giving them essentially 
the answer um, that um, a prompted question would be, did you know that we sponsor the blah, 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 whatever it is? Um, and that's a yes or no answer. So you're relying and and it's not necessarily that you're relying on people's honesty, but people don't always know. Once you say it, it seems familiar to them. But would they have been able to remember uh, to, to answer an unprompted question, a spontaneous question? How high is prompted awareness of the brand? So when it's named, have you heard of Guinness? Uh, you know, to take an extreme example. Now, the next question. So we're going through these questions. Where are we now? Where do we want to be? So what do you want to achieve in this promotional campaign? So, for example, are you trying to move the customer from unawareness to awareness? So or from liking to preferring your brand. Um, it's crucial that the marketer is clear about the brand's current position and knowing what customers actually think of the product or brand. The marketer must understand customers' perceptions so as to decide what to do next. You have to get real. You have to know, you know, the hard truth. If it's not a well-respected brand, then that's your starting point and that's what you want to work on. Understanding where you are and where you want to be will enable the marketer to establish how long it will take, how much it will cost and what tools you need to use within your uh, promotional mix. So next, um, how we get there. So uh, we've worked out where we want to get to from where we are now. So now we fill in the gaps. How do we do that? What is the strategy? This involves production of promotional mix and media strategy to meet the objectives of the promotional campaign. So the objectives were hopefully outlined in the previous heading. Using their knowledge of target audience, the marketer will generate integrated strategies to differentiate, remind, inform and or persuade. So DRIP, D-R-I-P. And did we get there? Once you have run a campaign, you want to be able to look back and decide, was that successful? How can we measure whether or not that was successful. Can we definitively say, yes, we achieved our goals and our objectives, or no, we did not quite meet the targets that we set. So marketers are under pressure to see a return for their investment in promotional campaigns. So the brief should highlight how the campaign can be measured in terms of meeting objectives. Um, and so this is all about setting smart objectives. Every objective should be smart. It should be specific. It should be measurable. So each objective ticks all the elements of smart. It's not. Uh, well, it'll, it's sometimes confusing when I list exactly what it isn't because uh, people tend to then remember that. Uh, but each objective. If it's if you only have one objective, it has to tick all the boxes. So it has to be smart. It has to be measurable. It has to be actionable, or, uh, achievable. Uh, realistic and relevant and timed. So there has to be a deadline. And um, so over the course of this three month campaign, that can be the deadline. So in this three month period, X, Y and Z. Uh, that can be broken down into weekly targets and monthly targets as well. So, so more thoughts on comms planning provides a rationale uh, process for identifying the most important communication issues, informs everyone involved with Marcom. So the, the plan that the creative brief can be sent to everybody and say, look, this is what we're following. If you're developing, if you're working on this campaign and you're developing something as part of it, it has to fit within this. Um, so um, again, it's the orchestra working together. So helps ensure that the Marcom is integrated and focused, helps identify budget and creates a benchmark for measuring results. So. <coughs> In coming up with the plan, 
we can follow a seven step process, starting with the situation analysis and um, includes the SWOT and um, brand positioning in USP, determine Marcom's objectives, develop comm strategies, set the budget, implement the budget, implement the plan and evaluate. Uh, always, always, always evaluate. And evaluations should be ongoing as well. So as I said, you know, we can have an overall um, overall targets uh, for the end of the campaign, but there should also be perhaps weekly and monthly targets uh, breaking that down so we can see, are we on track to hitting that final deadline? So in that step one, we develop um, the uh, SWOT analysis. Um, and that gives us the, the landscape of the company, the product, the audience, the competitors, all of that. So company analysis, product analysis, audience analysis, or so target market uh, and competitor campaigns. So that all feeds into understanding where we are, uh, what our strengths are uh, relative to the competition. So we have to have done the competitor, uh, looked at competitor campaigns and weaknesses uh, and threats, uh, you know, it. It's all looking at our internal um, information with an external um, slant to see how is that impacted. So marketers must understand the current and potential environment that the product or service will be marketed in. This affects the target audience perception and action. The environment presents opportunities and threats for the company. Um, and so this is where we do the pestle analysis. The marketer must consider how their strengths and weaknesses could affect their ability to exploit opportunities and or manage threats in the environment. So that is engagement with target audiences, their perception of the product or service or, or the company as a whole. A detailed SWOT should be developed at the end of this step. So sorry about the spaces in the wrong places. And usually we We'll add an LE there for pestle uh, is more common. Oops. So this in this is instrumental in establishing. So the SWOT is what we're talking about here, establishing strategies that the company can take to minimize, to maximize the outcome of your IMC. So in your situational analysis, summarize issues that will directly impact on the comm strategy. Company analysis would include your company mission. And again, these are things you should just generally know. Um, you know, you only have to really look these things <laughs> in detail uh, once, and then it's just a matter of um, making sure it's still up to date current so uh corporate goals these don't change year on year usually they may um be minor changes every few years um depending on how the organization functions and uh, then significant environmental influences could these have a positive or negative effect on the campaign so your pestle analysis comes in there uh, relevant marketing data, so all that internal stuff, industry reports, anything like that, market share, sales, trading radius, all that. So in our product analysis, you're looking at the product background, past and present advertising team themes, what worked, what didn't work, your current brand, current problems, current advantages, unique features of the brand, current level of satisfaction of customers, um, um, with the product or brand. Retailer, um, they are sources of information as well. So what are their perceptions of your brand? Are they willing to stock your product? Are they happy with it? Um, you know, um, general information that they can give, whatever feedback. Distribution, again, information coming from the distribution channels and the product life cycle. Where is the product in the product life cycle? Um, and are the four P strategies adequate? So what's the current marketing mix? Um, competitor evaluation, we're still in step one, comparison to direct and indirect competition. So direct competition is a similar product or service that we are offering and indirect competition are different sorts of products or services that can in a different way satisfy the same needs and wants. 
So if we're selling uh, for a bicycle manufacturer or a bike shop selling bikes, <laughs> direct competition are other retail outlets, whether they're online or bricks and mortar, who are also selling bicycles, are indirect competition. <laughs> If we are, if part of our target market is selling bicycles to commuters, whether they're students going to college or, or workers going to work, <coughs> excuse me, public transport is indirect. Excuse me. So indirect competition in that case would be public transport because that is also getting the same people from A to B potentially. And we need to keep an eye on that. If suddenly public transport was free, that would affect our sales for those groups. List the main competitors and know the, the ins and outs of them as it relates to us. Evaluate how customers perceive the different brands in the market. Um, including your own, evaluate the level of satisfaction with all the brands, including your own. What are the creative themes and marketing efforts um, and the various product features of each competitor? Have they moved customers along that, excuse me, thinking, feeling, doing model? What are the strengths, weaknesses of each um, of the main competitors and how do you fit into that? Uh, retailer perceptions of the brand, are they willing to stock some and not others? Are they happy with yours in relation to the others? You know, get general comments that they may have. Distribution, again, uh, other feedback from them. So next within step one is audience analysis, understanding our target market. Who are you, who exactly are you selling to? What do they like? What are their choice criteria we talked about in previous classes. Where do they go? What do they do? Analyze demographics, psychographics, lifestyle needs and wants. What social media pages do they prefer? How much time do they spend online? What kind of pages? You know, what's their online um, um, behavior? Are they researching online, but usually buying offline? Are they um, or the other way around, are they um, all sorts of mostly online behavior these days um, is what we're looking for. Um, general hobbies and lifestyle as it relates to um, what we want to know for our products. So we should be able to form all of this into our uh, strengths and weaknesses. Um, so. <coughs> It's, it is just a, a sample one there and um, usually done in a table form and so on. And so gathering all the information together, we can summarize what our strengths are, what our weaknesses are. Do our strengths represent some opportunities and um, that we can uh, look at and do our weaknesses represent some threats. And um, coming down the line. So once the SWATs have been identified, they need to be prioritized based on criteria such as realistic damage to brand relationships and brand equity if a weakness or threat is not addressed, realistic benefit if a strength or opportunity is leveraged, cost of addressing or leveraging each SWAT, time the company has to address or leverage each SWAT. Now, finally, moving on a step, step two, brand positioning and USP. So the location, brand positioning, where, what do you want the customers to think about uh, when they think about your product? When they're comparing our product to the neighboring product or other products on the market, <coughs> where do they sit in, um, you know, in terms of value for money or reliability? or expertise, all that sort of thing. So when you take various characteristics that are important to our customers, where do we slot in? Are we high, uh, the most favorable? Are we low down? 
that sort of thing. So that's what we mean by the position we occupy. It's in a ranking order, um, you know, best at the top, worst at the bottom. Where do we slot in for whatever characteristic is important? So um, unique selling point then, USP, uh, is a, a, we should understand what it is we're offering to the customer. What are they getting from us that they're not getting somewhere else? Why should it come to us and not someone else, another brand? So what's in it for me, the W-I-I-F-M-E? Uh, why should I buy from you? So that's, you have to get a clear idea in your head. What is the answer to that? if a customer was to ask. I mean, they don't ask these kinds of questions, but if they were to, that's that's our positioning. If we're uh, that if we can answer that question, that's the start of what is this campaign all about? So our campaign will try to achieve that um, result, um, if that's what we're saying. So what is the general vibe we want to put out there and we want, what is it that we want customers to think about when they think about our product? So uh, make a proposition that the competition either can't or doesn't offer, or if it exists, it can be defended. It has to be strong to move consumers towards your brand. So that's step two. Step three, determine Marcom objectives. So this is where we get into writing actual SMART objectives. Um, so measurable objectives. This um, is how we know at the end, did we achieve our targets? It has to be something that we can measure. Um, we're not looking for fluffy notions in the sky. We want, if we're thinking of overall aims of identifying brand awareness, then we want, um, you know, how many people have have seen our ads? How many people uh, have liked our um, various social media pages or follow us or have seen um, some of our campaigns on social media? So all of these things are tracking, um, uh, trackable things that can be just done automatically and checked on a regular basis. And um, so if we are measuring brand awareness, we might have targets that we want to achieve, that we want average, an average exposure of um, our average number of likes per post to be 200 likes per post, We you know, and um, overall likes on our page to go from blah to blah, get additional followers each month a certain number and it has to be realistic for the type of product and the type of activity that we're doing. So these are all things that we can look back over and say, well, yeah, OK, you know, we we had a slow start. We weren't hitting the average uh, targets in the, the, the kind of broken down average targets for the weekly. But once we got um, a month into the campaign, let's say we started to hit those and overall we achieved the overall target by the end of the campaign. So we can see we can track that um, behavior of the campaign and in that case we had a slow start, but we got there in the end and that can feed into information of maybe how we want to do things differently in the next campaign. Maybe we want to have a bigger start to the campaign so it gets off the ground, hits the ground running uh, with hitting targets. Maybe our targets were too high to start with uh, and were too uh, ambitious. So these are things we would reflect on and look back over and that helps us plan better the next time. And every time we do a campaign, we should be learning from it. So every campaign gets better and better. But hopefully we can learn from other people's mistakes. <clears throat> And, you know, even if it's our first campaign that we can still, um, you know, be fairly realistic while ambitious, we want to be realistic with what um, targets we set for ourselves. We don't want to just stick numbers in that look great uh, in the boardroom and so on and look like great targets to achieve and wouldn't it be wonderful but if the if we haven't a hope of achieving them we're just giving management a stick to beat us with 
later on and it's just it's serving no good purpose. So overall smart objectives help address and leverage key SWOT findings. So we um, we want to know knowing our weaknesses helps us work on overcoming them perhaps and that can um, turn a weakness into an opportunity and so on. Objectives should be uh, smart, as I said. Um, so if we're looking to um, increase, perhaps we have social media pages, we want to increase the transactions or the, the engagements by 15% within the next eight months, if it's an eight month campaign, for example. And so that would be broken down into specific numbers on each. Um, that it actually um, would not be specific enough, uh, just brand awareness. We would want a different objective for Facebook, for TikTok, for LinkedIn, if we're targeting perhaps professionals, um, you know, whatever social media account we're using, we should have a different um, objective set for that. So they are really specific. So we want to increase uh, the number of um, followers on TikTok by 15% over eight months. Um, it may be TikTok, maybe the company you're working for hasn't used TikTok before. And so in that case, you can't work on percentages, but just hard numbers and say that you want to get. You know, if it's a local gym, maybe you are talking about like low numbers, like you want to ha have 200 followers by the end of eight months. If you're talking about larger brands and so on, you might be interested in. Um, yeah, thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands um, and so on. So um, the objectives should be looking at, broadly speaking, moving the customer through that um, TFD model. And that was step three. So step four is develop your strategy. So flesh out what exactly is the plan. Um, so every objective should be supported by one or more strategies. Each strategy should have a rationale that explains why the strategy ideas are sound and why they are worth the resources invested in them. So if we had, um, as we were um, discussing in the previous step, if we have a smart objective around developing a presence on TikTok, then now we have to have a TikTok strategy. So what are we going to be doing on TikTok that um, will encourage people to sign up and follow the page and separately to engage Age with posts that we put up. So, you know, there are two different things going on there and maybe um, so we have to figure out what is it we have to put time and effort into developing that page. What will the page look like? What kind of content are we going to put out there? What is the theme of that content? Um, what is the style of that content? Um, is it going to be um, just random? Is it going to? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, this is where you're getting into the into the specifics of it. Uh, <clears throat> so developing strategies involves campaign impact, identifying key problem to be solved, campaign duration. So the overall marketing strategy. <laughs> is it to penetrate a market rapidly, then you, you need to hit hard and fast or is a long term um, strategy and you can spread it out over time? Will you try to build awareness and market share over a longer period of time? How long will the campaign last and what's the timing of each element? So these are questions to be worked out. Selecting the most relevant Marcom mix to help achieve objectives. So again, we we'll look at that in more detail when we get into the tools of your promotional mix. Creating the big idea. What's that general vibe, that central vibe that's going to be carried through the different elements that we're going to be doing in the overall campaign? So across, let's say, TikTok or um, other social media uh, campaigns, um, and everything else we're going to do. Are we sponsoring events or people? Are we doing PR? Are we doing um, 
any kind of mass advertising. So what is it? What's that central theme that links all those together? What's that vibe we want to put out there? So that's the, the big idea, the creative step, the Nike, uh, just do it. So identifying then the best media mix. So once we know what the message, roughly speaking, should be, then we start to figure out well, what's the way to get that, what's the best way to get that kind of a message out to that type of people. So again, it's about understanding your target market um, and what you're trying to achieve in this campaign. And then finally, agreeing how the comms will be integrated to create that strategy. So it's coming together of your master brief, your master creative brief. And um, so the questions are just to um, jog your memory when you're going when you're doing your studies. Um, so this master brief or your creative brief is the summary of everything. It's still not working out the details, but it's the big thinking. It's the big picture view of how everything comes together. So sometimes it can be just on one page. So the work of the marketing team is directed by a framework called a promotional creative brief. And um, as I said, it can be the master brief as well or the master creative brief. So this brief is a planning tool widely used in designing or implementing a marketing program. And this is the thing that's discussed in the in the board meeting. You know, it could be put up on, um, you know, in presentation form uh, where you're trying to get approval from the uh, higher ups that, you know, your campaign ideas are sound. So having this brief. It keeps everyone focused on the big picture and how what they're doing, because, um, you know, perhaps different teams are going to be working on different elements and the brief keeps them on track and keeps the orchestra playing together to keep that analogy. So it's a cooperative tool um, by which various people and groups involved in the Calm project focus their thoughts, analyze the best methods of approaching the program. The brief represents the agreement on what the communication program is to achieve. So um, we look at the Nike example in uh, the tutorials. So step five then is set the budget. So allocate a budget for each promotional mix element. <clears throat> the promotion of the budget, sorry, the proportion of the budget allocated to any one promotional element should reflect how accurately it reaches and impacts the target audience relative to the other elements. So we should know exactly what are we trying to achieve with each element and get value for money. And then the sixth step is actually is put the plan in place, do it, implement the plan. So. Um, project timeline, calendar of events, critical path, charting techniques, and all these listed in priority order uh, are the tasks, elements, and promotional executions set out in the comm strategy and the promotional mix. Um, so, <clears throat> you know, it's making sure that everything runs like clockwork and as it should. And then finally, evaluate. So this is the reflective element. Um, that some of this is done throughout the campaign, but a real analysis then looking back to see how did it all come together. Um, measuring campaign effectiveness or metrics we talk about in social media all the time. Uh, it's integral to the IMC project uh, concept. IMC presents an opportunity for marketers to embrace accountability. So assess the cost benefits of promotional campaigns, use a media monitoring service to collect and collate mentions in the media. So there are um, there are online tools you can sign up and you can put in your details um, and it's a subscription um, fee basis usually and they will monitor if um, Usually when there's a lot of traffic happening on your social media networks, you can use one of these tools and they will um, collate kind of average. Um, they'll tell you the, the average interactions per post. They'll give you um, 
kind of a summary of the general comments that have been made and all sorts of things, things to watch out for negative, um, you know, what's the proportion positive to negative, all these kinds of different ways of collating um, some data. So as I said, it's it's a really useful um, tool um, across all the, the social media networks that um, if you just don't have the time to be checking now, obviously, if you're just working for one gym, you're probably not really going to use a lot of these. You will use some of them and um, scheduling posts and things like that can be done. The same ones or different uh, software um, subscriptions and. Um, constantly learning from everything we're doing and updating what we do and um you know expanding um when when we know that um some of the techniques we're doing works really well we should do more of that and other stuff is becoming less and less effective over time and so that we know to to reduce the funding and stop do um, stop doing as much of that and put the money where it's working and where we're getting return so here's uh, some um, lists of questions, a again, to jog your memory of the topic, help with exam study and prep uh, by um, writing out some answers, you know, practicing handwriting out answers to questions and so on. And again, in the tutorials, we'll be talking through some of this and we'll be going through the, uh, the Nike and the Guinness um, case studies. Um, to further understand and see how it kind of fits in a, in a real sense. All right, thank you. Um,